Hey guys, it's Allie with SupBoardGuide.com and today we're going to be reviewing the iRocker All-Around 10-Foot Ultra. It's one of the newer additions to iRocker's Ultra Series. They're all meant to be lighter, stiffer, and faster than the iRocker Originals. And this board has become my personal favorite as a smaller paddler. It's really sporty, it's really maneuverable, but you still have a little bit of speed and a pretty comfortable level of stability. So let's get into it. So we're gonna start this review by kind of going through what you get with the board and the bag and then all the included accessories. So of course the bag is pretty small. It's supposed to be the compact version. It's really nice to carry. It's about 10 pounds lighter than the originals. Um, and then once you get it off, okay. So the top part kind of functions as a roll top. Um, of course the strap on Velcros and then you just undo this buckle, roll it open. Um, we really like this because you can kind of put anything you want on top of the board once you have it secured in the bag. We also really like that the front panel has an extra pocket with this zipper. Um, it also has two more pockets on either side on the outside. And then once you unzip the front panel, your board an accessory pouch kind of sit in there like that. Um, so have the accessory pouch with the electric pump, which we'll get into in a second. And then your board. If I can get it out. Your board sits in there like this. It rolls up much smaller than the originals. It's super light. Um, we really like it. We're really impressed with how small they were able to get it. And then in your bag still, you have your five-piece paddle, um, a little bit different than the normal three-piece paddles, but of course it's just so it can fit in the bag. Um, but overall, we are really impressed with how compact it is, how portable it is. Um, it's basically everything you could want in a travel or hiking board, and I've been super happy with it so far. So to dive into some of those smaller accessories, we really like that iRocker included this accessory pouch. Personally, I'm always losing things in the bigger backpack, except especially once they get into the smaller pieces. Um, so this has been super nice from an organization standpoint. And then this front pocket on the accessory pouch is a Velcro closure, um, and it's a really nice spot to put your fins. The new Ultra Fins are kind of funky. They're a little bit long and skinny, but we like the way that they work so far. And then once you open up the pouch, okay. So once the pouch is opened up, it's a good spot to keep your leash, again, just the smaller things, um, but it's also a perfect spot to store the electric pump that iRocker has chosen to include with the ultra boards. We are super stoked that they included this um, just from the standpoint of that it's really hard to inflate a board manually and having the electric pump there takes all the grunt work out of it, just makes for a lot more of an enjoyable experience. Um, so overall, this kit is pretty high value. Um, we're really impressed that they were able to keep the price where it is, even though it is above the original series. But as we said, the value is sort of unbeatable at this point in the game. Now we're gonna show you what it's like to actually inflate a compact board. Um, again, iRocker chose to include the electric pump, so it does make it a lot easier. Right now we're gonna be using their battery pack. This doesn't come included, but we do recommend purchasing it. It just adds a lot more portability to the board. So we'll just hook it up. Okay. And then the way that they were able to make these boards so compact, they actually split the deck pad in the middle, um, which makes it able to fold in half, uh, sort of hot dog style, hot dog style, if you will. Um, and then that's also why they chose to make it the twin fin system instead of a two plus 
instead of a two plus one or a tri-fin system. It just makes it easier to fold and get into that smaller state to fit into the backpack. So you'll unfold it, undo the valve, make sure that the pin is up so that you don't lose all your air once it does get inflated. Okay, and then you just hook it up. Turn your pump on to 16 and then you just hit go. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some of the more technical aspects of the 10 foot ultra, such as the construction and the features. Um, so as far as how the construction changed to make these boards a lot lighter than the original versions from iRocker, is that they decided to switch from a linear drop stitch to a woven or cross drop stitch. And what that does is it allows them to use less material to achieve a better level of stiffness. So by orienting those threads in an X pattern rather than a linear pattern, it just is a little bit more um, structurally sound. It has a little bit more integrity for lack of a better word. But the bottom line is that it does feel a little bit stiffer on the water and it is a lot lighter. Um, and then as far as the PVC layering, that is the same from their original line. So they still use the triple layer composite construction. Um, we're not sure exactly what they mean by composite. What we've been told is that it means that each layer of PVC is a different density. iRocker is a little bit more tight-lipped on the exacts of that, rightfully so. Um, but that's what we know about the base level of construction. And then they still reinforce the seams with the reinforcement tape. Um, all the handles are still well attached. As far as what we've come to expect from iRocker, that's all the same. These boards are just a little bit lighter and a little bit stiffer. Um, the 10 foot ultra specifically is 19.8 pounds. It's about four pounds lighter than the original 10 foot all around. Um, and then it does have a lower weight capacity than the original 10 foot all around. It's 260 pounds. We think that's a little bit of an understatement because this board does feel really supportive on the water. Um, of course, we need to do more testing to figure out exactly where the cutoff is. But for now, we think they're underselling themselves a little bit. Um, and then as far as dimensions go, the 10 foot ultra is listed as 10 by 32 by six inches. Um, we did measure it to be just a little bit narrower than that, which is fine, but it probably is why the 10 foot ultra feels a little bit less stable than the original 10 foot all around from iRocker, it's not a massive difference. It's just something that we've noticed in our testing, probably just because we have the boards back to back. Um, and then as far as features go, they're essentially the same. Um, it's a little bit less cluttered than the original line, which I personally really like, and you still have all of the versatility. Um, so starting at the tail, you have that rear carry handle, um, you have your offset inflation valve so that you can fold the board in half hot dog style when you fold it up. Um, you have a rear action mount with your leash D-ring and then you have this rear cargo area that's fully removable because of these bungee clips. Personally, I remove it just because I don't store everything back here and then I can move around a little bit more on the board. There's also these rear grab handles, just another thing to hold on to while you're launching your board. Um, and then there's the split deck pad, again, so you can fold it up, but the actual deck pad is the same grooved and brand stamped pattern that the original line has. We really like it. It helps keep water running off your board in the grooves. And then the brand stamping adds a little bit of traction, but it's not as uncomfortable as something that would be a little bit more aggressive. And then you have your center carry handle, which is also offset like the valve Again, so you can fold it up. Um, and then up at the nose, you have your front cargo area, also with removable bungee clips, so you can customize it a little bit, which is really nice. 
Um, there's grab handles up there too, so you have something to hold on to as you launch your board or as you drag it back onto shore. And then there is a front handle up at the nose. To be honest, we were a little bit worried about the placement of that just because it is on the nose of the board. We were worried that as you were sprinting that it would catch water and create drag. It doesn't. I haven't had any wish issue with that. Uh, if you're in waves, it might be a different story just because you have water crashing on your board, but I don't think it would be anything so massive that it would ruin your experience or really be all that noticeable. And then as far as the kayak seat that all or most iRocker boards are compatible with, this does still have the D-rings that are available to attach the kayak seat that's on their site for an additional purpose, but it just adds a little bit more versatility to the board than it already has. Um, but so far, we really like it. The other thing that we want to talk about in this section is the paddle. Um, so at its tallest height, at its tallest height, it goes up to 86 inches, which is great, especially for tall people. We tried it on one of our reviewers that's 6'5", and it was able to fit him perfectly. Um, at its lowest height, though, it's 76 and 3 quarters inches compared to iRocker's 72 for the original line. It's not a massive issue, um, but being 5'2", it does make the paddle a little bit too tall for me, even at the lowest setting. And again, it's not a massive um, difference, but it's not what I would like if I was sprinting um, or if I wanted to pick up a little bit more speed. If I'm pad paddling more casually, it's fine. It's totally functional. It's just something that I would like to see them rework in the future. Okay, so now we're gonna dive into the performance of the 10 foot ultra a little bit more. And the first thing that we wanna cover here is stability because that is like the driving factor of how much fun you're gonna have, especially if you're just starting out. If you can't stand, you're not gonna have fun and it's gonna be a really tiring experience. The 10 foot ultra, because it's a shorter board, it's gonna be more stable for smaller and shorter paddlers. Um, as you push that sort of height range, you are gonna experience a little bit of a decrease in stability, but I think if you're an intermediate paddler, it'll just make for like a fun board sort of experience. Um, as a smaller paddler myself, the primary stability when I'm just standing here is perfect. Um, the secondary stability when I rack side to side, essentially, how much time I have to recover before I actually tip the board. That's pretty good as well. Again, I am smaller. Um, I'm not gonna push it too hard right now just cause I don't wanna fall in on camera. Um, but you have a good amount of time. You can push it pretty far without rocking the board too much. Um, again, as you push its size range, the weight capacity for the 10 foot ultra is about 260 pounds. Um, as you push that, you are gonna experience some decreases in stability, but this board is super rigid, and I think that it probably could hold more than 260 pounds. It's just a matter of how much performance you're willing to lose um, and what your trade-off is there. But for a smaller 10 foot by 32 board, I think it is more than stable enough. Compared to the 11 foot Ultra, it's closest um, in similarity in the Ultra series. It's a little bit more stable for me, again, as a smaller paddler. Taller paddlers are probably gonna like the extra volume that you get from the 11 foot. Um, and then, of course, the 10 foot isn't quite as stable as the Cruiser Ultra or the Blackfin CX Ultra. Those are just wider boards, so that's to be expected. Um, compared to the original 10 foot, all around from iRocker, it's not quite as stable. We found it to feel a little bit narrower um, and a little bit more responsive due to that rigidity, but it's not a massive difference. Um, it's just something to take note of. I think the benefits of that far outweigh any decrease in stability that you get. Overall, I am really happy with it as a smaller paddler. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about maneuverability. It's basically exactly what you would expect out of a 10 foot board, meaning that it turns really easily um, pops up in a step rack turn really quick. It's just everything you would want out of a fun board um, or for a smaller paddler again. Compared to the other Ultra Series, it's definitely one of the more maneuverable out of the bunch. It's almost comparable to the Blackfin 
CX Ultra. Um, it's more maneuverable than the 11 foot Ultra for sure. And again, right about in line with the Cruiser Ultra compared to the original 10 foot. I think the maneuverability is almost the same. Um, you might experience a little bit of a decrease when you go to the 10 foot Ultra, but again, not something that's super noticeable. Um, it's more so just because this board tracks really well too, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with the maneuverability. It's one of the reasons that I really like this board as an all around for somebody my size. It just makes your paddling experience a ton of fun and super easy no matter where you are. So to get into speed and tracking on the 10 foot Ultra, I honestly expected to see huge trade-offs in tracking, especially given how maneuverable this board was, but I was definitely wrong. Um, this board just tracks really, really well, especially compared to the original 10 foot all around from iRocker. Um, it just grips your path a lot more naturally and is much more forgiving, even if your form isn't 100% there. As far as speed, it's a really light board, so it's really quick off the jump. It's only 19.8 pounds, so that makes sense. You're not trying to get a huge mass moving in the water. And then once you are going, it's really easy to keep its momentum, again, given how light it is. I think the stiffness plays in there as well because you're not creating any inconsistent drag, anything crazy like that. You're just keeping a smooth and steady line. And we think we, they did a really excellent job on the rockers on these boards. You don't feel like you're pushing water at all. Overall, a big improvement from the original 10 foot all around. Compared to the other ultras, I think it's not quite there with tracking as the 11 foot Ultra or the Blackfin CX, but it definitely does a little bit better than the Cruiser Ultra, which kind of surprised us because the Cruiser is a little bit longer of a board, but it is a little wider. Overall though, I'm really impressed with the speed and tracking, especially for a fun shorter board like the 10 foot Ultra. So we've covered a ton of information in this review so far. We went over the bag, the kit, a lot of the finer details of this board. But the bottom line is that the 10 foot Ultra from iRocker has quickly become my favorite board. Um, definitely out of the Ultra series, probably out of iRocker's entire lineup. Yes, it is a little bit pricier than the originals, but I think that the benefits of it far outweigh that. Um, you get the electric pump in the kit, you get that entire new compact backpack, um, the paddle's great, fins are great. There's not a lot of complaints that we have. If you've enjoyed this review, make sure to give us a like and a follow so I can keep my job. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or read through our written review, which you'll also find a link to in the description. In the meantime, I'm Allie with subwareguide.com. Have fun, stay safe, and I'll see you out there.